Good evening. Yes, as people, are we open to what God is busy doing? Okay, so I want you to be vocal with me tonight, please. So tonight we're starting a brand new series, Jesus, What's the Fuss About? So the name Jesus is quite a significant name. It carries with it a lot of weight. Some people hear the name Jesus and it evokes deep adoration and unwavering devotion. Whereas other people hear the name Jesus and it raises questions. It raises skepticism or doubts or whatever it may be. But one fact is undeniable. Wherever you find yourself on the spectrum of who Jesus is for you, Jesus has left an indelible mark in human history. So that is what we want to explore in this series. What is the, 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 the thing that Jesus left in our hearts when it comes to Christianity and what is this fuss. So tonight I want to start with throughout the framework of one Genesis, um, Gen one Genesis, there's only one Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 56, which says that we are created in His image and in His likeness. So a lot of times we tend to focus on that we were created in His image, which is good, which is important, but we tend to forget that we're created in His likeness as well which means that as Jesus, we, you and me, have the same spiritual capacity to do what he did, to, to serve how he did through his life on earth. And to prove that we are created in his likeness, um, I want to be bold and I want to do an experiment. Are you open for an experiment? Please be vocal with me. Are you open for experiment? Okay, great. So. For this experiment, I, I need you to be honest. Everybody's like, nope, regret it immediately. I want you to be honest and I want you to be bold. Okay, can we, can we do that? So just, just to, to get it out of the way, I, I'm not here to expose anyone. So already people's like, whoa, where is this going? You, you, you'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. So um, if, you, if you agree with this question, I want, to, I want to invite you to stand. Can we do that? Can we be bold? Okay, there's like seven people who's like, hell no. Heaven no, sorry, heaven no. Um, so if you have ever broken something, I'm not talking about your mother's favorite vase, like or vase or whatever it's called, like not a favorite pot or whatever. If you have ever broken anything, like a fracture or something, I want you to stand. Oh my goodness, what's wrong with you people? Yes. Cool stuff, thank you for the boldness. So I want you to invite you to keep standing, sorry. Well, there's already two squads today, so that's good. So if you share a Netflix or Disney account with someone, please stand. You can't lie in church. Oh my goodness. For everybody that's sitting, well done. So I, I just want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep standing, so like you can decide what for what I'm standing up. So I want to ask you if you actually sta already stand and you agree with the next questions, just to raise your hand as well. So we're going to go far tonight. So if you have ever taken your own snacks into the cinemas. <laughs> Neil, you're a big child of God. Big child of God. So it's amazing that some people are like, like, yes, that's me, and other people are like, so now we're getting to the point that I want you to be, be honest, and for this I want to get real for a moment. If you were ever bullied in school, raise your hand or stand up. Cool, thanks. If you have ever, if you have a need for better friends in your life right now, okay? If you have lost a mother or the father, If you have lost someone to cancer, if you are uncertain about tomorrow, if you had a rough couple of months, there we go. 
if you have ever felt like it's just too much? For the last questions, if you have ex ever experienced God's goodness in your life? Here we go. So I needed a question that got everybody's hands up. But the reason I wanted everybody to see is that we share likeness. We share things in common. Sometimes it's like sharing a Disney account or a Netflix account. Um, that is a lot of likeness between people sharing. But sometimes we are connected to things that hurt. Sometimes we're connected to things that are broken, even when the things that are broken is us. You're welcome to take a seat. So I want to invite you to give yourself a hand for that. So what I see tonight, the likeness is that each and every person here, if you put up your hand or not, if you got up or not, that you were created, you are created in his image and his likeness. And for that, I want to kind of prove it to you tonight. So this is a beautiful picture of, um, from NASA of Earth. And some way that you are here listening to someone with a mic right now. But the thing is, you and I live in a world, in a culture that is driven by performance. We are driven by, by evaluation and, and comparison to a point that you and I belong to a certain category, whether it's good or bad. Just as we have experienced tonight, you and I, we belong in certain categories, whatever it may be. And sometimes the categories are good and sometimes the categories are not that good. And it's weird, we have this internal desire that we have a, a, a deep need to belong, even, sad to say, but even if it's just on an earthly basis. Remember, like you can always see in the movies, there's, there's this like um, two captains and they have to choose their team. And I don't know if you have experienced that, but um, I, I think that is where people started to pray. They, they, they started learning how to pray. It's like, God, just please don't let them pick me last. Like, like have, you, have you experienced that? It's like, we have this need to belong if it's just like, I'm not picked last or I'm picked first or whatever it may be. But what if I told you that you were created to belong? Not necessarily based on the categories or the questions that I asked tonight, that, but you were created to belong. You were created to know people and to be known by people for, for connection and relationship that, that you are worthy of love and acceptance and that your life actually matters. What if I told you that God created the world for me and you, for you, he made room for you on earth and he wants you to flourish and to be whole and to belong. He created you to belong to him. That your story, your life is, is part of a bigger story than just yourself. You see, we live in this duality on earth of, of belongingness, if that is even a word. That the, we, we live in a world that, that you have to do something so that we can belong. We have to, to qualify in order to belong. We have to achieve or approve ourselves in order so that we can belong in a certain category. In terms of what God came and did for us and who he is, we can just belong. On earth, we, we need to do something to belong. And in Jesus, we can just be long. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I want to prove to you tonight that, that God created me and you to belong. And what I did at the start of this, this service is such a beautiful picture that we belong together in him, in community. And I want to, want to turn to Genesis and the stories of creation. So you are more than welcome to open up in Genesis 1 and 2. So I'm not going to read through it. I don't think you can necessarily keep up. Genesis is a long book. Um, but I'm, I'm going to talk through it in terms of the two creation stories. There's a creation story in Genesis 1 and the creation story in Genesis 2. So um, the first picture is this one. If we go through Genesis 1, it, it gives us this picture of who God is. There's this powerful creation, um, creator, he, he makes the, the earth and the universe and, you know, um, everything visible and invisible, seen and unseen, as Jock mentioned earlier. And it's just this picture of, of a powerful creator. He uses the words letter and let it, and there are wonders. And after every act of wonder, he just simply utters the words, it is good, it is very good. But the reason for the arrow is like kind of we, 
where God is, He creates there. Down there. And then we move to the second story of creation in Genesis 2. We get kind of a different picture of who God is. Almost from the earth, from the ground up of who God is. That God is not just this, this far off God, but that He is imminently present with us. A God who is, is not afraid to get His hands dirty. You know, when He creates me and He creates you and He creates everything else, He, he doesn't mind getting His hands dirty, putting His fingers in the soil to create everyone around us. But if we look at both of these stories of creation in Genesis 1 and 2, it, it gives us such a beautiful picture of who God is and what God is like. That God is an awesome and powerful creator, but at the same time, He is intimately present with us in the now. If you look at both of His stories, um, it, it just shows us what God is in His heart. What God is at His heart, He is a God of hospitality. The very first act that God did is hospitality. He created this earth for me and for you where His presence dwells with us so that we can be in relationship with Him and belong to Him. Remember, God didn't need to create the heavens and the earth. He didn't need to create the universe. He didn't need to create me and you. But He is a Father of love. He is a Father of relationship. And He wants us to belong to Him. He wants us to be in relationship with Him. He wants us to, to, to belong in His presence. Just to illustrate it even further, God created Adam and Eve and he gave them the Garden of Eden, a place for them to belong. And he gave them this mission to till the earth and to keep it, to serve the earth and to keep it. And we all know what, what, we, what happens with the rest of the creation story, but that is not my focus for tonight. I want to remind you that the same mission that God gave Adam and Eve to serve and protect the earth was given to me and to you. Remember, we are created in His likeness. The same spiritual capacity that Jesus has is within me and within you to serve and protect wherever we go. And it's this beautiful picture of, of God who brings in this, uh, this hospitality so that we can belong. The result of hospitality is belonging. He is a God who serves. The result of serving is belonging. So just to illustrate it even further, when you entered the gate, there was a big team for hospitality that was serving there. And you got in, you drove in, you felt this is a place where I can belong. So just as if earlier this evening we heard someone was just driving past and they saw everybody there and they're like, yeah, let's try this. That's hospitality done right. When you came into church being served coffee, it's a place, yeah, I can, I can see myself here. This is a place for me to belong. But we get this picture even further. When Jesus is sent to earth, this, this embodiment of servanthood. He is the perfect picture of serving and hospitality. And we read in, in Matthew and Mark that he came to serve rather than to be served. He chose the form of a servant rather than the form of God. One way Jesus came as a servant was taking in the limitations of the human body. Though eternal, Jesus entered earth as an infant. It's this beautiful picture further from Jesus that um, he washes his, the feet of his disciples. And Peter is saying to Jesus, we are the ones that are supposed to wash your feet. And Jesus says, but I'm willing to engage into your mess in your life. I'm willing to get into the mess of your life. Because washing feet in those times were quite dirty. They didn't wear shoes, things like that. If they wore shoes, wind terrible, like desert, whatever. Like it was Jesus' willingness to get into the mess of others, each other's life. And the reason why I wanted you to see what everybody went through at the start of the service with all this question, that there are messes in people's life. And to ask the question, are we willing to get into the mess of other people's life around us? Jesus prayed to his father in John 17, God, as you sent me into this world with a mission, I sent them into this world with a mission. 
Remember, you are created in his likeness. The same spiritual capacity that Jesus has is within me and within you. And we are supposed to do the same. As followers of Jesus, you and I are invited to continue his work of servanthood. Not to be served, but to serve. So to illustrate it a little bit further, even the, the concept of serving and hospitality, I want to turn to Romans 12. You're welcome to open your Bibles up in Romans 12. We're going to um, focus for, for a short while on Romans 12. And it's such a beautiful book. Not, not even just Romans, but the, the chapter 12 specifically is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because it, it shows this, this, the, this heart of hospitality and what does serving look like. What does loving people look like and what does loving people not look like? So it's such a beautiful picture. If you talk about Jesus, what's a fuss about to look at Romans 12? So Romans 12, verse 6 to 13, Paul's writing, So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioned parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we are made to be. So it, it, there are these beautiful words that Paul uses, but at the, the end of the day, what he's saying is that you and I are called to be, to be servants in a specific part that God called us for. You and I have a, serve, a, a mission to serve and protect the area that we are in, and we have that function that we need to live out. And let's read what Paul writes further about what does this serving look like? What does this function look like? look like if you preach just preach god's message nothing else if you help just help don't take over if you teach stick your te stick to your teaching if you give encouraging guidance be careful that you don't get bossy if you're put in charge don't manipulate if you're called to give aid to people in distress keep your eyes open and be quick to respond if you work with a disadvantage very important if you work with the disadvantage, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Challenging, right? So, can you imagine the last little, just the last sentence? Keep a smile on your face. Can you imagine this place where you serve, whether it be your work, your school, university, your, your relationship with other people, or your marriage, whatever it may be, keep a smile on your face. And do what God called you to do, to serve how God called you to serve in that space. Quite challenging. And, and Paul goes further. He says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil and hold on to dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice, pl practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves filled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in hospitality. And in, in this, this, these couple of verses, Paul is writing that it's not always easy to serve. It's not always easy to serve. And it has to come out of the heart of love. Because if it's not done in love, you will fake, try to fake it, and the result will be that you will get burnt out. To be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant, always be ready to serve wherever God is stirring in your heart in the moment. Try to serve not out of your own, but out of the spirit, to keep it filled and aflame. Serving is easy if it's done out of love and through the Holy Spirit instead out of our own. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. And this, this is Paul just tying everything up. Just standing, standing up at the start of the service, raising your hand. We are being made aware of what the needs of people are around us. Maybe you raised your hand with someone next to you as well and you went through the same thing, but you have tools to help them to go through the same thing to, to, to heal from the same thing and vice versa. To help needy Christians and to be inventive in hospitality. Other translation says it's so beautiful. Contribute to the needs of God's people. Make sure you are hospitable to strangers. So beautiful. 
that we need to be ready to serve strangers. The Greek word for, for um, hospitality is philonexos, phil philoxenos, sorry. And it's a compound word um, consisting out of philo, which is love, and xenos, which is stranger. It is the exact opposite of xenophobia. Serving strangers and be, being hospitable to strangers and to people around us, to, to needy Christians, is the exact opposite of xenophobia. And there's this beautiful quote by Rosaria Butterfield saying, serving helps turning strangers into neighbors and neighbors into family. Because what, 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 is, what God is busy doing and Paul was always writing in, in, in Romans 12 is reminding us that when we attend to the needs of other people, when we serve other people, it is not us just ticking the boxes saying that, yeah, we did good. He reminds us that when we serve people, we include people. And when we include people, we give them belonging. And when we serve out of the love of who God is, His likeness, people will realize they have a belonging, a need to belong to, to the Savior. They, need, they realize they have a need for a Savior. To help other people and to, to serve other people snaps us back to reality and, and reminds us how important community is. How easy it is to, difficult, yes, but how easy it is to go through difficult seasons in our lives because we know that there might be a person next to us that went through the same thing. And God has placed something in you that you can do to serve someone else that doesn't know what to do in specific season. Reminder, Jesus prayed to his father, as you sent me with a mission into the world, I sent them into the mission in the world. And you and I are invited to do the same, to follow the servitude of Jesus. We are created in his likeness to continue this servitude. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19 to 23, it's, it's a jam-packed uh, piece of scripture. So... So bear with me for a moment, but it, it is such a beautiful picture of, of, of serving in the places where you go, whether it be your work, your university, your, your marriage, your, your school, or, or having a relationship with father, your mother, whatever it may be, wherever God calls you to serve. Paul is writing, even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, that is belonging to the world attending to the demands and expectations of everyone. But this is Paul writing the opposite. Even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. Religious, non-religious, meticulous moralists, loose living immoralists, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever, you can continue that list on your own terms. I didn't take on their way of life. I get my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. Ooh, challenging, right? I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. This is where it becomes challenging for us. This is where we are reminded um, that we are created in, in His likeness, the same spiritual capacity that Jesus has, that we are not called to, to, to be served, but to serve. If you really understand what, what Paul is busy writing in this on, on what it is like to love people unconditionally, regardless of who they are, what their background is, what language they have, and what is going on in their life right now, we understand that this is a moment, this is a, a serving possibility that we can create a sense of belonging for that person between them and God. If you really understand that we are called to serve, through love and, and via the Holy Spirit, it becomes easy. It, it becomes this passion that Paul is writing like, 
like I just didn't not just want to be part of it I want to be in on it I want to be part of the story where people realize they have a belonging in God and Paul just highlights I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God saved life so how's this for a challenging perspective? Every time you, you, you talk to people, whether it be in church, whether it be in the, in the areas that you move throughout the week, wherever you serve, imagine it's, it's a platform between you and that person and the meeting with God. Regardless, loving people and serving people, regardless of who they are, what background they're from, what language they are, their marital, stage, marital status, status, their mental health, your opinion. To love unconditionally in the likeness of Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. You and I are called for the same mission to continue the work of Jesus. To serve and not to be served. To help people belong in community and help people belong in God. Serving is, to serve is to love. To serve is to love and I want to share you a story with you of hospitality so if you think that is weird, the cream soda in Greek in Greece just looks weird um, thanks that was a joke anyway so I just want to to show you the the differences in hospitality when you're in South Africa and when you're in Europe so everybody knows what it's like if you go to the spur and just as you bite into that third buffalo wing and the Dirty sauce touches your lips and it stings a little bit and you know food's over here and you know, cream sodas goes in there and the, the waiter comes in and says everything good and everybody knows that awkward reply you, you can't necessarily call it a reply but you it's, it's between a reply and a nod you don't really know what to do in that situation but every time you're in South Africa in a restaurant the, the timing is just terrible timing is is, is so terrible but the intention is so good the waiter constantly comes up to you and to check if everything is fine if you need anything else so when you go to Europe so this is was us in like a me and my family about uh, two months ago we were in Greece so if you go to a restaurant there you see your waiter when you when you arrive and you see the waiter when you ask for the bill and the thing is, you, didn't, you don't know about that when you get there. So the rest of the, for the first few times, you think that the service is absolutely terrible. Like, service in South Africa is brilliant compared to what's going on here. But later you discover, like, your, your table is so full of food and so full of glasses and, and whatever you ordered and different main dishes and tapas and it's such a full experience and later you realize that the waiters are giving you chance to enjoy. The waiters are giving you chance to, to, to live in community, to, to, to keir lekker. There goes the Afrikaans. But when you put up your hand, when you call them, they're always there. And this is what, what God called us in terms of servanthood and hospitality. And especially what we did at the start of the service, sometimes we, we go through bad things, broken things, hurtful things, sometimes it's good. Sometimes we need to the hospitality of South Africa, looking into people, tending to people all the time, even when it hurts, even when it's the most inconvenient time. But to know, let them know that we're always there. We're always there to serve you when you need help. And then there are times when we need to be hospitable as we are, as, as, as hospitality increase. To give people space 
to, to, to get to know God. We give them space to, to have relationship with God. We give them space to, 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 to hurt when they are hurting. We give them space to heal when it is needed. But as hospitality in Greece, whenever they raise a hand, they need someone that you will always be there. Far stretch and way around. But I hope you heard my heart in this moment. That is how we are called to serve. To be ready even when it's inconvenient for the other person, but the intention is good. But also to give space when God is busy doing something and when they want to talk about it, when they need discussion and whatever it may be, to be ready and expect them to serve where God wants you to serve. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to just have this conversation of, of hospitality and servitude and, and how, how you want to use us wherever we go, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, for, for, for boundaries and opinions and everything that's, that might stand in the way of us serving people, Lord, helping people and attend to their needs, Lord. I want to be bold tonight, Lord, and, and in this prayer, ask for every person here to, to get coffee afterwards with someone that they don't know. Someone they saw put up their hands that went through the same thing as them, Lord. To open up conversations of where they are, how they're doing, and what God is busy doing. Thank you, Lord, that every person here is part of the, has a function in the body and wants, has, has a role to serve wherever they are. But our Lord, I pray that we start here tonight, that we can serve one another in church. May it roll over, may it spill over our lives wherever we go in other spheres of society. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to invite you to, to watch this video with me. Matthew 6 verse 19. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. A tremendous amount of time and energy goes into our storage of treasures on earth. Will I have enough money when I retire? Will I have enough money to pay for this? What if the interest rates goes up or down? Uh, what influence will it have on me? But we don't spend that same amount of time discerning, asking God, where should I store treasures in heaven and what does it look like where can i love more where can i reach out more where can i say lord if i seek first your kingdom all these other things you just give it to me so i want to take you ask you to take this envelope as a, as a symbol of our stuff and our time and our thinking around our stuff and we help ask god to help us to think about it differently lord we ask you that we know lord that the treasures we store up here on earth can be destroyed st stolen but what we store up in heaven with eternal value, Lord, that's where we want to spend our time, our money, our efforts, our thinking time. Lord, help us to, to transform our minds that we will spend more time on that than that we will spend on determining how can we become richer, have more things here. But that we will have more stories to tell about love and the transformation of this world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Gugu. Hello, AJ. Good evening. Good evening. Here we go. Here you go. Let, let's try this again. Hey, Gugu. Hey, AJ. How's you it want, going? I'm good now. Are you? Good, good. Do you want to build an ark? If I knew how, I probably would. Because I know our guy. You know? I know our guy. Uh, <laughs> he's full of jokes. Good ones. Last one. Okay. Last one. Okay. So, uh, do you think Adam and Eve date? Dated? No. They only have a, oh, I butchered it. In any case, let's just give me a hand of applause that I can feel better about myself. <laughs> That's why I need to read this stuff. I thought I was cute. But in any case. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. everyone. Um, that was an amazing uh, sermon. Thank you, Courtney. Very, very beautiful. Uh, good evening to anyone that's new in the church. Do we have any person in here visiting us for the first time? Stick your hand up. Here, Come on, you go. Shy. here we go. 
Lovely. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Um, if you would just do us a favor at the end of the service, in about two minutes time, and meet us at the back at the starting point. That's the TV at the back over there, so you can that see one over there. There, We want to meet you. He wants to meet you. We both want to meet I you. I want to meet you. Of course we do. We, we want to meet yeah. you. And uh, <laughs> uh, if you have you a joint... Do you think they want to be meted? Huh? Do you think they want to be meted? I think they want to be meted or yes. met. They want to be meted. Don't you want to be met? Yes. <laughs> I want to meet you. Of course I do. Uh, if you haven't joined a small group yet, what are you waiting for? Join a small group. Uh, meet with any one of the leaders. They will tell you which small group is nearest to you and just have community. It's probably my favorite thing to do. And I always say this every Sunday, but it honestly is one of my favorite things to do in the week, to meet with a small group and spend mm. time mm. Uh, mm. in fellowship with Christians and yeah. friends. And there's coffee. And there's coffee. All of it. And cookies sometimes. It depends <laughs> on how nice your small group is. I have a good small group. They always bring stuff. Do you, do you bring stuff? Sometimes. He eats all the hey, stuff. Hey, hey. They bring stuff for me. <laughs> He's a cookie, mon well, cookie monster. I'm a cookie monster. Any guys, so please um, get in contact with us. We would love to meet you guys. And then I want to really invite you for a cup of coffee. Um, at the back there, there's two beautiful people that want to meet you and they want to serve you coffee. Um, and if you, if you really, yeah, give them a round of applause, come on. Um, we are a community that loves to pray. Uh, we want to pray with you. The worship team is going to stay after the service, yeah, at the front, to pray with you. If there's anything that you have on your heart that you want to talk to us about or just to pray with you, please feel free to come and talk to us. And enjoy the evening. Enjoy Tomorrow, it's Bry Heritage Day. Are you brying tomorrow? We're celebrating we it cele tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to invite you to my house. Bring a little steak. I'll bring a Oros. And you got the charcoal. And the charcoal. And I'll bring the blitz in the fire. Of course we will. Oh, yes. <laughs> Enjoy it. Have a nice week. See you next week.